Despite yesterday's flurries, the chinkers are making good time. They finished the front and the sides of the cabin, so now they're focusing on the back and getting started under the porch roof. Unless the weather gets really bad, they should be able to finish by this afternoon. As the chinkers continue their way around the house, we've got more work happening up here on the roof. Earlier, we built up a layer of insulation between 2 by 8 rafters, and then covered all of that up with plywood and builder's felt. Well, now, we're going to finish off the roof with a final layer of concrete roof tiles. We've got a crew on hand preparing the roof surface for that. While the tiles are drying at the manufacturers in Oshkosh, the roofers went ahead with building felt and furring strips that they'll need once they start installing the tile. What they're doing right now is installing copper flashing along the logs. This will keep water from penetrating under the logs once the tile is installed. To prepare for the tiles, they're nailing down a layer of 45 pound builder's felt over the lighter felt that was installed before. And that builds up protection against moisture. Then they nail in the 1x2 furring strips that the tiles will lie on, and the strips go on horizontally about every 12 inches. They'll be covering the whole roof like this to get ready for the tiles. With the end of their work in sight, the chinkers are also up on the roof now, finishing off the gable and the shed dormers on the back side of the cabin. Their craftsmanship really finishes off the logs nicely, and is a welcome relief inside since the chinking has sealed out the cold wind that was blowing in between the logs. We've gone as far as we could on the second floor, so now we've started framing our first floor stud walls. And that way we can start running our mechanical systems upstairs. Now we planned our cabin interior so that mainly log walls would be visible from the largest room. But we still need partitions between the kitchen and the entryway and the bathroom. And there are aspects of this that are unique to a log building. Well, for one thing, I'm notching out these cavities wherever a stud wall meets a log wall. All I'm doing is making some saw curves here with a chainsaw I'll go back and knock these out with a hammer. After I knocked out all the extra wood, I chiseled out a nice smooth area here in the notch. This way I'm all set. Thanks, Julio. All set to slide a 2x4 stud in here. Now there's enough room on either side of the stud to slide the wall covering or siding in between. This will make a real nice transition from the stud wall to the log wall. And I'm securing it with washer nails in slots that will compensate for log settling. We're making other allowances for log settling. For instance, this stud wall rests directly underneath this tie log. So we need to create slip joints to keep the log from crushing the wall as it settles. And one of the first steps on this is the nailers. standard 2x4 stud wall that you use in conventional framing. We just cut the studs a little short here to allow for settling in the logs. Then we attached the bottoms of the studs, we plumbed everything, and then drilled up through the top plate of this nailer up here. And we lag bolted that in place to hold the wall secure. Now once the wall is finished here, once we have the paneling on the front, we'll take a trim piece, attach that to the nailer here, and that trim piece will slide down over the wall as the logs settle. work laying out the first floor partition walls, and as Greg Numidor wrapped up the exterior chinking, the sun finally popped out of the clouds. Greg headed back to Michigan that afternoon, but he'll be back later on for the interior chinking.